Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Alpern from Port Charlotte, Florida. In this video, we're going to focus on the steps required to produce the proper diagnostic x-rays for you to program the poly patient simulator. What makes the poly a tremendous advancement over old technology articulators is its unique reliance on x-ray data and measurements to individually locate the maxillary arch relative to the temporomandibular joints. Up until now, dentistry has been the only healthcare profession that has not been using x-ray data to measure the joint to which prosthetic devices are attached. The poly changes that. If you combine this innovative measurement process with a moving mandible, which actually chews like your patient chews, it can reproduce all of the multiple attack paths, all of the different occlusal positions for any restoration or any prosthesis that you're going to produce, and it'll do all that in the laboratory. Right. Taking advantage of the poly technology begins by capturing the conventional cephalometric views. These views include a lateral view of the patient, a posterior anterior view of the patient, and a submento vertex view of the patient. Each image is taken with a thin customized plastic matrix tray placed over the maxillary arch. This tray includes four radiopaque markers that appear on the subsequent x-rays. One, two, three, four. These markers appear on the subsequent x-ray images and that not only allows us to accurately determine the spatial relationship of the maxillary arch to the patient's TMJs, but to correct for inherent magnification at the point of measurement. Complete printable instructions for fabricating this tray are at the Weimer Corporation website, which is www.weimer.com. We use digital equipment here in my orthodontic office. However, before digital, we use conventional analog systems, and they work just as well. After the films have been developed, they are scanned and emailed to Weimer. Once the tray has been positioned and the impression material, the bite registration material has set, then I can remove the stabilizing tray and ask the patient to close slowly. And if they touch only in back, open. As a stabilizing point, I use a wet cotton roll, close, and squeeze just a little to stabilize the tray. Position the patient with the tray parallel to the floor. The patient should feel like they are gently hanging from the ear posts. This orientation assures that both superior borders of the external auditory meatus are resting on the top of the ear posts. When available, use the nasion rest to securely triangulate patient position. Make sure that the cassette or sensor is positioned sufficiently forward so that the anterior marker in the tray protruding past the lips will be visible in the image. Lateral in images can be taken in vertical cassette position to simplify cassette holder location for all three views as long as the anterior marker is visible on the image. We recommend the cassette distance to be standardized as close to the patient as possible for all views. Keep the Weimer First Fit Maxillary Matrix Tray in the patient's mouth along with the cotton rolls to prop the jaw slightly open. Have the patient bite gently to maintain position of the tray but not hard enough to cause deformation or disengagement of the tray. It's important that the tray remains seated in the same position as was used for the lateral view. Position the patient for the PA cephalometric view 
in the same orientation as was used for the lateral view. Head position here is critical to permit visualization of the posterior markers. Here's a few suggestions on how to position the patient for the submental vertex. What I say to the patient is, look, what we want is to get an image up this way, but unfortunately that machine won't tilt down. So what I want you to do is what your parents told you never to do. I want you to tell the patient to slouch down in the chair like this, and then take their hands and hold the bottom of the chair. And then it's very easy to tilt your head back enough, and you can use your feet on the rollers to move your head into the correct position. Remove the cotton roll spacers and have the patient gently bite down on the tray to seat it, but not distort it. Position the patient facing the x-ray source and with a combination of slouching in the seat and tilting the head backward, locate the patient with their occlusal plane as close as possible to perpendicular to the x-ray beam or sensor. Set the cassette position touching the top of the head. No nasion rest will be used in this view. Ear posts need to not be fully engaged or can be fully engaged just as a guide to ensure level consistent position of the head. There's a tendency in this view for the patient to shift on the ear posts and twist their head. Check that the head is level before capturing the image. A magnification scale here is a real benefit. Positioned at the ear post, it can make analysis much simpler. On this equipment, we can use a 10 millimeter diameter of the ear post rings to corroborate magnification. Please check the quality of the image to assure clear visualization of the condyles. Once the radiographs are processed, please make sure that you can see all of the markers and make sure that the condyles are clearly visualized. This is a lateral view showing the tray markers which must be seen on the x-ray so that they can be measured. This demonstrates the tray as visualized on the PA radiograph, making sure that all of the markers can be visualized. Once the digital or analog images are processed, simply email them to the Wimmer Corporation for analysis and a prescription will be created that will be used to accurately set the maxillary arch on the poly. Send the models, a bite registration, and the maxillary tray to your poly lab.